Hello, my name is Austin Kennedy. I am a huge TA for CE353, and this will be the second part of my Muddiest Points review. Um, this one will cover creep and relaxation, as well as cracking and material properties. Alright, so uh, first off we have linear elastic behaviors. Um, this is a, just helping to set up the definition of creep and relaxation. So you can see here in a linear elastic behavior, a certain amount of strain will translate into a certain amount of stress. That is highly predictable. Um, in fact, it is linear. So you can see that for that for each increment of strain we increase, there is an increment of stress that is increased. Um, you can take this to be the other way too. For each increment of stress increased, we have an increment of strain that is increased. And the slope of this relationship is E, or the elastic modulus. Um, this slide and the next one I took directly from Dr. Underwood's notes because I think he does a good job of summing up what's happening. Um, so you can see here where this elastic region occurs. Um, generally, it happens you know, right in the beginning of your stress and strain curves. And you can see it increases to a point. Um, it starts to reach um, some, some failure, some yielding right in here. Um, there's a definite yielding portion where you're not gaining any, any um, stress. It's just increasing in strain. Then you have strain hardening up until the ultimate point, which is the maximum possible stress um, that the material will hold, at which point it starts working over towards fracture. Um, if you remember back to the lab, you could see that in um, you could see that in the test where we broke the the pieces of steel. You could see where it was elastic, start to yield, strain harden, and then the necking and eventual fracture would occur. So now we start to talk about actual creep and relaxation. You can see in creep, what's happening is for a linearly applied stress, you're going to get a variable amount of strain. So stress is being applied at a constant rate, but the, um, the related strain is not going in a linear fashion, as you can see in this slide, where it's very linear. Here, it is not linear, it's actually, um, it's decreasing. Relaxation is, uh, relaxation is what's happening with a constant strain. And what's happening is the stress is, is uh, decreasing. Okay. So here we have, and um, so this can be kind of, the creep and the relaxation can be kind of a weird thing to think about. We've seen it before in our everyday lives, so you can think about creep happening, think about a grocery bag. So if you have a grocery bag filled up to be, you know, just to the point where it's not breaking, um, at least not immediately. But if, as you're carrying that grocery bag in from your car, the, the plastic kind of grocery bags, it'll start to stretch. So here we have a constantly applied stress, right? It's not increasing at all. It's just a constant stress. Yet the bag is creeping. Um, it's stretching out as we carry it in. Um, so that's a, that's a good example for creep in our everyday lives. So stress concentration factor. Um, this one is, is an equation that's going to relate the, um, the length of the crack and the curvature of the crack. And you see here that it's the stress concentration factor, Kt, is equal to 1 plus 2 um, length of crack over curvature raised to the 1 half. A large stress concentration factor will usually result in a faster failure due to fracture. And the best possible KT occurs um, when the 
when the the radius and the curvature are equal to each other so that happens for a circle and that will give you a KT of 3 um, also notice that there are no units for this you have your um, radius and you have your curvature um, and that's going to give you um, that's not going to give you any units so stress intensity factor is going to give is given by this equation um, notice that you do not want to confuse it with the stress concentration factor that was seen on the previous slide this is stress intensity factor now the units that we have here are given by Pascal meter to the um, Pascal square root meter or PSI square root inches make sure that when you plug things into this equation you're keeping your units consistent with one of these two um, you could have something like gigapascal square root meter or um, KSI square root inches but just keep this meters to the 0.5 or the inches to the 0.5 consistent. A y is a dimensionless, dimensionless parameter that depends on crack size, specimen size, and the application of the load. Um, this might be given in the problem or you might have to solve for y using um, an example so they might give you a, com a, a comparative um, a comparative situation where you're going to have k stress and uh, crack crack radius um, and then at which point you will have to solve for why that is a possibility that you run into um, here's an example concerning stress intensity factor um, I was asked as money's point to get an example of this one so this is a pretty straightforward uh, plug and chug it says here, a material specimen is known to have a fracture toughness of 75 KSI square root inches. So this is another way that you might see um, this K defined. Rather than a stress intensity factor, they might call it a fracture toughness. It means the same thing in this context. So the specimen is loaded with 50 KSI and has a crack length of 0 0.5 inches. Through testing, it has been found that y, the, the dimensionless parameter, is roughly 2. Determine if fracture will occur. So here's the equation we're going to be using. We plug in 2 for y, 50 ksi for the stress, pi, and then 0 0.5 inches divided by 2. Um, that's because the crack length is 0.5 inches. We want this radius, so we divide it by 2. Um, you might remember seeing in his slides that the length of the crack was always given as 2a, whereas all the equations we have for um, stress intensity or stress concentration factors use a. So you're going to want to take this crack length that's given and divide it by 2 to get the a that you're going to plug into the equation. So plug everything in. Um, we wind up with 88.6 KSI square root inches. That 88.6 is greater than the 75, so fracture will occur. Okay, so for material properties, um, there really isn't one place that you can find everything you need. Um, specifications or designs will often dictate certain values. The problem might have uh, givens in the problem statement, then you're going to want to use those. Um, otherwise, Google. Google is your friend. Um, I personally use engineeringtoolbox.com if I'm unsure of a certain property. That's a pretty good website. I know um, I know Dr. Underwood has has put some stuff from there on the slides. Um, they, they have a pretty good list of, of many different properties. Um, some relatively safe assumptions for steel you can assume um, most of the time that the modulus elasticity is 29,000 KSI and FY 60 KSI um, for concrete FC primes 3,000 to 5,000 KSI um, and just once again Google is your friend here when you're looking at material properties if you want to gather a couple different sources and compare them 
Um, yeah, so if, if it's not given to you and you have to look it up, just look it up, use uh, reputable sources, and you should be fine.